Okay. So women now, Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, advice for women, because on the flip side, you have women who, and I, I know many of these women and they're beautiful women. They're living lives of chastity. They're trying to seek the kingdom first and doing amazing work for God. And they're really struggling trying to find that man. Yeah. It's a white martyrdom. It really is. And, and you've got to look at it throughout that heroic lens that you're saying, God, I know if I wanted what I want bad enough, I could go get it against your will. And what I want, as I mentioned with the guys, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> I'm not wanting to go clubbing and go do this and that. I just want a husband and I just want a little baby and I just want to raise a holy little family. And that's half of the cross is the mystery of it all of just like, yeah, I know I'm, I'm, I'm feeling all this hurt, but when's it going to end? You know, is, is tomorrow the day? And what I would challenge that girl is just to don't lower your standards for the opportunity to hope you can fix a guy and rehabilitate a guy and change the guy. Only date or marry someone hoping they're going to stay the way they are for good. Otherwise, you're dating your imagination. You're dating a project. It's almost like a home makeover TV show kind of thing where she's in, you know, they fall in love with this kind of rundown property because they see the potential in it. And so women date like that, this missionary dating thing that if he was a house, he'd be like some dilapidated, haunted <laughs> crack house in Detroit. <laughs> she's thinking, oh, but we could put a swimming pool out back. I'll get some curtains. And, and you're like, it's, where's the budget for this? Yeah, anyways, it's like. blown. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so don't date like that. You know, mm. so do, if you're content, just basically look, okay. Well, if there's just dilapidated houses everywhere, what do you do, yeah. right? If well, I, you're saying don't settle. Yeah. Despite the, the, despite the ache, don't settle. Yeah. Just look at the qualities you have. And if you're content with none of that changing 10 years from now, then it's probably a good marriage decision. But if you know you would not be content, if this stuff was still on the radar 10 years from now, don't go down that road. Open. You can focus on the friendship and maybe he'll change over time, but don't enter into romantic relationships hoping you can kind of rehabilitate a troubled guy. And so trying to keep those standards high as heaven, because what I say is, look, I know it's hard to be disappointed in some guys, but it's much better to be disappointed in some guys than to be disappointed in yourself for settling for a guy who's half the man that you deserve. Because there's one thing more lonely than waiting for marriage, and it's being in the wrong marriage. Mm-hmm. Always wondering, what if I had held out a little bit longer? You know, how do I leave this now? It's such a lonely place to be. At least in singleness, there's a there's hope every day. Who knows you're going to meet today? You never know. And so I would say, yeah, it's painful and God has given you a cross and it's truly a white martyrdom. And I don't know what the future holds, but when that pain comes up, just keep repeating, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Because we don't even know we're promised tomorrow. We don't. I don't know that I, I'm going to get home safe tonight to the family. Like, I don't know how many hours we have, but all I know is that we should arrange our lives in such a way that everything glorifies God. Mm, so good.